Hey guys, I'm GamerMate. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own round system. So, let's get into a video. First, if you make the lobby. So, I'm just going to skip ahead to when I finish making mine. Okay, so here's the lobby. All it is, is a model called Lobby. Inside of it, we have this model called Map. And this is just the uh, floor and glass. And then we have a part called Teleport Point. And this is where the players are going to be teleported to. So, if you just change the transparency to 1, so now it's invisible. And that's it for the lobby. Now I'm going to be working on the maps. So once again, I'm going to skip ahead to when I finish making them. Okay, so here are the three maps. So the first one is a beach. The second one is a forest with a house. And then the last one is this volcano. It's a model with the name of the map. And then if we open it, then like the lobby, we have a model called map, which just has all the uh, models in it. And then once again, we have a part called teleport point. If we change the transparency to 1. Also make sure this part has can collide off. So the players don't collide with the part. And then we have the same for the two other maps. So once again we have the map and then the teleport point. Once again make sure the transparency is set to 1. And can collide is off. Then the same for the beach map. Like that. So once you have your maps. If you go to replicate storage. Click on plus. Then add in a folder. Then rename it to maps. Like that. Now if we click on each map. And then drag it into a folder. Just like that. Now close off the folder. And then once again, click on replicate storage. Then click on plus. And this time, we're going to be adding a string value. And then rename it to status. Now if we go to the start of GUI. Then click on plus. Then add in a screen GUI. Then we can rename it to status GUI. Also, make sure reset on spawn is unticked. Like that. Then, if we click on plus on the GUI. And add in a text label. And now we can change the properties of it. Like the size and the colour. Okay, so once you've done that. Click on the screen GUI. And then add in a local script. And if you want, you can rename it. I'll just call mine display script. Okay, so up top we have a variable called status. And this equals to a game dot replicate storage. And then we're waiting for the child status, which is a string value in the replicate storage. And then we have a variable called label. And this equals to a script parent, which is a screen GUI. Then once again, we're waiting for a child text label. And then down here, we're using a function called get property change signal on the status value. And in between the function's brackets, we have value. So what this does is that it's going to run the code once the value property has been changed. Then down here, we're changing the label's text property to the status value. So this is going to display like the intermission, the random map, the countdown and stuff like that. So we close it off. Now if we go to the server script service, click on plus. Then add in a script. Then name it to anything you want. I'll just name mine to round script. Like that. So up top, we have a few variables. We have one called lobby. And this equals to game. Dot workspace. Then dot lobby. Which is the lobby model that we built before. And we need to get the lobby to be able to teleport back each time the round ends. Then we have a variable called maps. And this equals to a game. Dot replicate storage. Then dot maps which is the map folder. Then we're using the get children function, which will get all the children inside the folder, which is each map. Then down here, we have a variable for status value. So this equals to a game dot replicate storage and then dot status. Then down here, we're using a while true do loop and we're using this to run the code inside of it over and over. Then down here, we're using a for loop. So you can see it says i equals to 10 comma zero comma minus one. So what this means is the 10 is how long the timer is. Then the 0 is the end number. So it counts down from 10 to 0. Then minus 1 is how many numbers it takes away or adds on to the time. Then down here, we're changing the status value to equal to a string, which will say intermission, colon, and then space. And then dot dot means we're connecting the text to the i, which is the countdown. So each second, it'll say intermission, and then for the amount of seconds. Then down here, we're using task.wait with one second. Now if we scroll down, 
So here we have a variable called chosen map. And this equals to a maps folder. And then we're using map.random to pick one random map out of the folder. Then we have a variable called cloned map. And this equals to a chosen map. But then we're using the clone function. Then we set the cloned map's parent to the workspace. So the map will actually appear in the game. Then we change the status value to say map. Then we're connecting it to the cloned map's name. Then down here, we're using task.wait with three seconds, just so a player actually has a chance to see what map it is. Now if we scroll down. So here, we're using a for loop to get all the players in the game by using the get plays function on the player service. Then we have a variable called character. So this just equals to a player dot character. Then we have an if statement to check if character is actually a thing. So if there is a character, then we have a variable for the humanoid root part, which is like the main part of your character. So it equals to the character dot humanoid root part. Then we're changing the humanoid root part C frame, which is like the position of it. So we're changing the humanoid root part C frame to the cloned maps teleport point C frame. So this will teleport all the players to the map once one has been chosen. Once again, if you scroll down, so far the game time is the same as the intermission, so we're using the for loop for the timer, and if you want, you can change how long it is by changing the 10 to a different number. Then once again, we change the status value to this text, so it'll say game, then we're connecting it to the eye. Then once again, we use task.wait with one second, just so it waits one second each time it takes away a number from the timer. Then go down, then once again, we do the exact same thing, or teleport but instead we teleport them to the lobby instead of the cloned map and finally if we go down then all we do here is destroy the cloned map once the round is over and that's it for the script so we close it off and click play but once we're in the game it should count down from 10 there we go so we have 10 seconds in the lobby and it should pick a map there we go map beach and it spawns in we teleport then we have 10 seconds to play the game so if we just wait, then it teleports us back to the lobby and that's it. Okay and guys, that's it for this video. If this video helped, then make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. In the description, you can check out my Roblox group and Discord server. And I'll see you later. Bye!